I'm very happy to introduce um, Mia Kivipelto, the uh, visionary architect of the Worldwide Finger Study, who will give us an update where she stands with her uh, study and obviously give us some outlook where potentially this can lead us. Thank you so much, Andrea. It's my great pleasure to be here today. And I'm so happy to give some updates from the Worldwide Fingers, where we are moving towards personalized multi-domain interventions, global strategies. And of course, we want to use the, this network to study more and focus more on sex and gender differences. We heard clearly how important this is for our future. So I have a few slides just to give a bit more numbers and the scientific background. And George already very nicely presented that we do have so many modifiable risk factors. So there is so much we can do already today. Uh, at least 40% of all dementias are linked to these modifiable risk factors. We have these metabolic vascular risk factors already at midlife. And there are also some more new novel risk factors like hearing loss, social isolation, I would say very important, and even air pollution. And luckily, there are not only risk factors, there are also protective factors like healthy uh, balanced diet, education, lifelong, lifelong learning, I would say, physical, mental, and social activities. And we are studying even more novel risk factors not only depression, but already feelings of loneliness and hopelessness have been linked to an increased risk of dementia, as well as stress and sleep disturbances, which I believe are very common in our societies. Impaired oral health, that could be through inflammation and various infections, which were already mentioned. A lot of this earlier evidence comes from observational studies. And we have also one question which I think we should study more. Are there differences uh, in the prevalence of these risk factors between men and women? And are some risk factors more important for men and women? For me, this, for me, this is really the uh, kind of starting point for the precision medicine so that we can tailor the interventions even better in the future. Well, it has been quite difficult to study, surprisingly difficult to study the, uh, uh, the sex differences because sample size is often quite limited in one study. So what we did in the Nordic countries, we pulled together some epidemiological studies so, so that we had more power to try to have these stratified analyses. And we found indeed that some of the risk factors were more important among women. The genetic risk factor, A.4, lower education, really highlighting the importance for early educational activities, living alone, hopelessness, and physical inactivity. The same risk factors were important for men as well, but they had a bit more vascular risk factors as well. My colleague, Sirin Sindi, who is also joining us today, uh, has been working with me and we have been reviewing the literature, not only these three studies, but also other studies which have been published. And we found that there are indeed some more uh, specific risk factors for women, which are hormonal, for example, early menopause and late initiation of hormone replacement therapy. And there seems to be some risk factors which are maybe a bit more stronger among women, APOE, the genetic risk factor, some vascular risk factors, and even stress and sleep disturbances, as well as weight loss later in life. And of course, as I said, a lot of this evidence comes from observational studies, and we often want to have evidence from clinical trials because this is the highest level of evidence. And finger trial, which I have been leading, was indeed the first randomized uh, clinical trial showing that it is possible to prevent or at least postpone cognitive decline if we put together these modifiable risk factors, the multi-domain intervention. So it's like one hand and five fingers with nutrition, exercise, cognitive training, social activities, and taking care of all vascular and metabolic risk factors. And as you may know, we have been able to show benefits on cognition, but even other benefits, lower risk for stroke 
and cardiovascular events, 30% lower risk for functional decline, 60% lower risk for chronic diseases, better health-related quality of life, and even health economical benefits. So benefit on brain health, general health, individual and societal level. We did not see any clear differences for cognition between men and women in our first analysis. But now we have been studying even deeper, especially the gene environmental interactions. And I'm very excited about these findings. These are totally new, not yet published, but I wanted to share them with you. Persons and women who had the genetic, genetically increased risk, uh, Alzheimer's uh, polygenic risk score beyond APOE4, they seem to get even more clear benefit of the finger intervention. And for me, this is really good news for women. And I fully agree about the gener generation health approach. Uh, genetic risk factors may not be so non-modifiable, especially for women with healthy lifestyle. You may reduce the risk or at least postpone the onset of, of cognitive decline. This is, of course, something we want to study further, not only in the Nordic countries, but using the whole Worldwide Fingers Network. And here, as you can see from the map, I'm very excited that we are now having 62 countries from all continents who are part of this network. Many trials, 14, are already completed, many of those with positive uh, results, 21 ongoing, and many in the planning phase. And you can start thinking more than 18,000 participants already in the trials. We can really talk about big data, and we support also the data sharing, as was mentioned, so that we can easily and more easily analyze this data. Here you can see the growth of Worldwide Fingers, and I really hope that it continues to grow. And this is a happy photo from our annual meeting when we get together. And I'm also very excited and happy that many of the researchers are actually women. So we are also supporting uh, leadership and uh, academics in, on, on, on that level. And just my final thoughts here, what, which leads us to our discussion part, we are having these international working groups within the worldwide fingers. We have the prospective harmonization for lifestyle, for biomarkers, blood-based biomarkers, even more innovative biomarkers like microbiome. And now we want to launch the international working group focusing on sex and gender differences understanding more about the risk factors, the influence, and underlying mechanism between men and women. And my final slide uh, reminds us about the importance of implementation. And even here, we work indeed on different levels. We have lost brain health clinics in connection to memory. George mentioned the importance of primary care, that's where we want to implement as well. And the community level, the broadest level as well. And here we have these new initiatives, Family Fingers, where we indeed take the whole family. We want to start even earlier at schools. And here we have the initiative High Five for Life. And then the newest one that is, of course, interlinked Fingers Initiative for Women, and here, I really hope we can use and further develop this uh, finger model together with all of you and start thinking what we can do on awareness level, research level, and implementation level. Thank you so much for your support and looking forward for working together with all of you. Thank you, Mia. As you know, we have a bit the women's uh... PHP so heavily supports this uh, finger for women. Let me just ask one question. Do you believe, I mean, the data becoming more and more clear, I was really, really uh, surprised and happy uh, in a way to see that finally we are starting to understand that there are differences. Uh, they are scientifically proven before we assumed it, but now we have data. Um, so do you think we can actually define lifestyle programs which uh, tailor men and women? So can we make women specific 
um, interventional studies, for example, to really uh, respond to the scientific basis? Do you think that's possible? I think it's possible and it's already partly happening because as I showed, of course, the risk factors are there both for men and women, but there may be differences and there are differences during the whole life course. We have not yet fully understood all the differences, hormonal differences, uh, psychosocial differences, and especially what can we do? What is the best way for that? And I would say that the World Wide Fingers for me is a wonderful opportunity to study this because we have women and men in very different cultures and contexts, and the genetic background is different, but also the role for women, for example, can be very, very different. So I hope this can help us indeed during the whole life course. And I was also thinking what was uh, said earlier, Sons said it so nicely that women are having so important role in the family as well. And that's why I also think that this new initiative, Fingers Initiative for Women is of course very much linked for the Family Fingers Initiative as well. 